I'm gonna give you one of the hardest questions you're gonna have to answer. Don't ask me who's I'm, the favorite. Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> All right. Is this is this weird for you right it, now? It is. Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm more nervous than I am when I'm interviewing someone. Honestly, I feel like I should have been on that side of the couch. Is that your side of the couch? We can I feel switch like we if you want. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that later. <laughs> Anyways, first I'm gonna introduce myself because everyone is probably like. What is going on right now? So I'm Katarina Contreras. First of all, nice to meet you. It's the first time we've met in person. Um, I am a professional host, just like you. We're twins. Um, I work with the NBA, MLB, WNBA, but most important, I work with the Fit Expo. So I'm one of their hosts. And recently, you guys have partnered, and they brought me in. Big guns. I got I to gotta harass you a little bit. How are you feeling I'm about it? I'm, I'm good with a bit of harassment. Yeah. Just a little bit, right? <laughs> So obviously we have the Escape Your Limit podcast, huge fan. I was listening to like thousands of episodes on the flight up here. I'll talk to you a little bit about my favorite episode in a little bit. But um, I heard you say that Escape Your Limits is about making something that you thought was impossible and making it possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a solidly like loaded question right now. Okay. So how did this empire start? And the reason why I, I'm sure you've been asked this a lot of times, but I feel like we grow up and see highlight reels now mm -hmm. and we just see all the shiny stuff and we see all the success. And sometimes people forget that there is some just work and dark days mm -hmm. and times that you just, you don't share. And so I want to know some of those times, how did that start that aha moment of, you know, where you are today. Right. It's a, it, it depends how far you want me to go back, really. Um, but I'll, I'll try and sort of find, I'll, I'll find a couple of places that might be relevant to, to the question. I, I, well, I, I grew up in a place, I, I grew up in the sort of in the middle of nowhere. It's a place called, uh, it's a place called Yaxley, um, which you've never have heard of. No, I, I've <laughs> been there. <laughs> and it's, um, it was in a, in a, I'm joking. <laughs> It was in a, it wouldn't surprise me actually, but it, it's um, it's in a place called Cambridgeshire, which I'm sure you've heard of Cambridge, it's yeah. where they have the university. So I was, I was, that's that's where I grew up. And and there was nothing really around. There was no um, no sort of inspirational figures. Um, it was it was just like a small little village, a farming community. And um, and I just, even from a, a real young age, I just, I, I never, I never wanted to be there. <laughs> I always used to watch these American, um, uh, and my, I remember my grandfather used to sort of always complain at me, why do you watch those American TV shows? He, he used to say they were, they were rubbish. And, but I used to watch sort of a lot of the American, um, yeah, just anything, any sort of American TV series or movies. And, and, and I, I used to just really, I used to be cycling around in the, in the rain and in the gray skies. And I used to want to be on the beach like some of these movies I watch. You know, I wanna, used to want to hang around in my shorts and... <laughs> You know that that was my my dream, and I, I and that was from a really young age. I think I must have been sort of just starting school when I um, when I sort of had that 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 dream. And in fact, I, my mum came home from school one day, and she says, "What have you been telling people?" And I and I said, "What, what do you mean?" She says, "Well, you know, your teacher said that you've got you know you you, you live in America and you've got this family <laughs> over there." I, I made this sort of dream up in my mind. I must have you know kind of making stuff up, telling children. And, um, and, and yeah, so I, so I think from a young age, I wanted to sort of just, you know, get out from where I lived and, um, and just, just come to America, really. That was, that was my sort of dream from an early age. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I didn't like school. I wasn't very good at school, um, and, and I, I, so, which meant I sort of didn't study. So when I left school at 16, I didn't really have a lot of, um, a, a lot of prospects, really. You know, I, I couldn't, couldn't get a job, so I went to work for my grandfather and doing something I didn't really want to do. And um, yeah, I, I think like like a lot of people, you, you sort of um, you can end up quite easily losing your way. And um, and so so that I, I think for me that was probably um, the motivation to try and do something w with my life because I, I wanted to, you know, I, I weren't really happy from where I was at the time. Yeah, and so uh, fast forward just a little bit. I mean, clearly you've always visualized and I think visualization is a huge part of just success in general. So when did that moment hit when that fitness kind of went in there? Were you always visualizing that? Was it always, where was it? Yeah, the, 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 the fitness thing, when I was about 15, mm -hmm. I, um, I, I, I um, again, relate to school. I was, I, used, I was on my roller skates and um, 
on one evening, fell off them, <laughs> damaged all my ligaments, and it gave me a brilliant excuse to stay off school for um, for about you know a couple of weeks because I had to have it strapped up. So I'm like, well, I can't go up and down the stairs in, 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 in at school. And so, um, so I sat at home and I, I managed to get one of these VHS cassettes and watch Pumping Iron. And I, I watched it over and over and over again. And um, I sort of tell this story to my, to my children. I, I was on these crutches and I, I used to sort of go up and down the house with these crutches. And I remember sort of going past the mirror and I'm like, oh, got a little bit of a tricep <laughs> coming on there, you know. You checked Maybe this is out, my destiny, you? <laughs> you know. <laughs> And um, and that was it. I wanted to be I wanted to be Mr. U Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be a bodybuilder, and um, and I think that was the sort of uh, turning point for me to sort of realise that you know fitness was something that I I wanted to get. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mm -hmm. just sort of felt I wanted to be a bodybuilder, and that was you know that was this thing that I you know tried to sort of engineer within my life. Um, and although it took me a long time to get there, I think that was. That's probably the first moment where I realized, you know, fitness was something I, the first thing I was actually passionate about. I didn't like sports at school. I didn't like school. I didn't, mm -hmm. didn't really like to do a lot. I didn't like to learn. But, you know, that, um, that sort of bodybuilding thing, you know, inspired me. That tricep. It was really, that tricep. It yeah. was that tricep <laughs> that was the pivotal point in your life. And so I heard that you said you bodybuilded, what, from 15 to 20? About yeah. Or? In, in England, they have what they call juniors. So yeah. um, I, I sort of competed as a junior. Okay. Um, I think the first show, I was, I was about 17, and I did it up until 21. And then, you know, at 21, I sort of realized that I didn't have the genetics to be, to go into the sort of next category. Um, you know, I was, I was okay, but I just, I, I felt, felt that it was, you know, it, more than training needed to sort of get you to a good standard. So I, I said, you know, that, that's it, and, um, and sort of left it there, really. And then you were like, oh, you know what? I think I'll just become an international businessman with just all this success. Was that, was that, that the turning? Of. Is that what you were like? <clears throat> you know what? I'm basically going to be Austin Powers, but like buff Austin Powers. Is that what the plan was? <laughs> yeah, kind of. We, we, um, <laughs> we, we sort of, when I, when, when I got to that age, it was, um, I, or, or just prior to that, I, I found that um, learning about bodybuilding and uh, competing and diet and nutrition, the best, you know, best place to learn that was to, was to hang around with people that, you know, that, that were very good in that field. And um, outside of the gym that I was in, I thought, well, I need to get around people, um, you know, internationally that are they're a lot better. My gym was fine, but it was in the middle of nowhere, if you remember. Yeah, we got to so, get out of there, like immediately. Got to get out of yeah, there. There absolutely. wasn't even any good yeah. bodybuilders in that place. There's <laughs> one. So I thought I need to get around some more. So I um, I decided I want to be um, a doorman, a body, uh, a security guard, doorman in a nightclub. You know? Yeah. Because all there, there, there was a place that's about an hour away, and, and all the sort of top bodybuilders worked in in this sort of brand new nightclub. So I've got to get myself a job there. Um, and a, a friend who was the DJ sort of got me in. So I, I used to work on on the door. This, you know, I used to have, years ago I used to kind of have these real smart suits and yeah. uh, <laughs> and and you had to look the business. And I uh, need a picture, by the way, after <laughs> this. Okay. <laughs> so I um so I did that, and but I I you know my network was was fantastic because one of the guys was one of the I think it was Mister. Mr. Great Britain or Mr. Universe, I think he was. And, uh, and so just as I was finishing my competition, I, I sort of got to learn and hang around with some really, really good people. Um, and so I, I did the dormant thing until I stopped bodybuilding. And then I kind of, you know, started to have fun of just <laughs> being a dormant. And I had my day job, but this was my sort of escape in, in the evenings where I would just, uh, you know, hang around and um, meet people and, and make some money. And that was it. So, so I kind of, I, I think sort of, I would say you could you could kind of say I sort of lost my way a little bit. You know, I, I didn't have a good day job, and that was my my escape route in the evening. And it wasn't until I got to sort of mid twenties that I thought I need to do something with my life. You know, I I had you know a number of failed relationships because I was a bit of a you know I, I was a bit of a I weren't the sort of person that you'd you, <laughs> I wouldn't want my daughter <laughs> to marry me. If you <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> cover, cover your ears, daughter, right now. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't the, the, a great example, and I thought I need to do something. And I know, and I, I think as I'd um, travelled more, I, I got to see. I, I went to work in London for a number of years, and I so I started to see what success was like. And I met other people that had businesses, and and that was something that that really inspired me. Um, in fact, a, a, a sort of a, a girlfriend of mine, her, her father had a very successful. A clothing business, and and um, he you know he started from nothing, and he had a beautiful house and car. And I thought, I want that, you know, why mm -hmm. why can't I do that? So I think that 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 seeing other people was was what sort of opened my eyes to say, well, you know, there's I, I need to do something, and if I'm if I'm going to make a change, um, 
I, I kind of had this, um, I, I guess, sort of thought when I was younger that someone was just going to come and write me a contract and and say, there you go, you know, million dollar, <laughs> million pound contract. You're, you're going to be successful and famous. And when it didn't happen, I thought I've got to take responsibility and do it for myself. And um, and so I did. And and I and, and the way I did it, I just started learning. You know, I, I started reading books. The first book I read was uh, The Power of Thinking Big, I think, or The Magic of Thinking Big. And, and I'd never, I don't think I'd ever remembered reading a book until I was about my mid twenties. I'm sure I must have done, but I'm, I, I felt that I got through school without, you know, outside of sort of, um, you know, Tom and Jerry and that sort of stuff. I, I never remember reading a serious book apart from, um, you know, the magic of thinking big. And that book had such a such an impact on me. It, it was it kind of, you know, I, I didn't know that you had the ability to control your thoughts. I didn't know you had the ability to dream things, and it and it really sort of changed the way I, I sort of looked at life. And then I, I met a friend who tried to sell me on a network marketing business, Amway, it was called. <laughs> okay. And, and he, um, he said, look, listen to some of these tapes. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he, he gave me boxes of these, uh, and they were cassette tapes. I had this really old beaten up car, and it was before MP3s and, and C CDs. It was called, they were called cassettes. Uh, have oh, you heard I think I've heard of them before, <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah. And he, he gave me all these cassettes. And, and I used to just, wherever I went, I'd put them in the car because although they part, you know, part of it was to try and get you to become a network marketer, the big part of it was about mindset and sales. You know, this mm -hmm. is how you can change your life and be successful. And, and so I just listened to every single one of them. And I went back to him and he's like, yeah, yeah. so you're going to, we're ready to sign you up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, look, I, I think everything is brilliant, but I, I don't want to work for someone. I want to do it. I want to own, you know, I want to, create my own Amway, you know, that's my, and, and, and I remember at that time thinking about it, do I want to have this opportunity to make millions as a network marketing business, um, which is what he was selling me on, or something else? And for me, it was like, no, I want my own business, I want to do it in my own way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and yeah, that, that uh, I started on that journey. And, um, you know, it was, it, was similar, it was very much a conversation with my father and I one day, he was, he was in a job looking to do something else, you know, start his own business. And I was at the same position and we had this conversation and, and we, we just sort of said, look, you know, if you if you come up with an idea, you know, let's talk about it and we'll see if we can get a business. And we didn't really care what we did. The only the only things that we did decide upon was he was an engineer. He wanted to make something. Um, and he said, if we make something, we should make it in Poland because he was he's Polish. His parents were Polish because he said, I think that's going to be the next um you know, the, the, the next market that's going to be like a low cost European manufacturing base. And at the time, Poland was closed. It was a it was kind of like a previously a communist country. You couldn't go in and out and travel like you could do anywhere else. So he said, like, when it opens Poland, we should make stuff. And for me, it was like, like I just want to hang around gyms and bodybuilding and fitness and that. So yeah. if we can put those together, then, you know, maybe we've got a business. And, and that was it. You know, that was as, as sophisticated as it went. Uh, I love it. I mean, honestly, that whole story of the mid 20s trying to figure out, you know, what you want. I think a lot of people are in that point in their life and maybe it's not their 20s, maybe it's their 30s, maybe they're starting over and you gave some incredible advice of just you didn't just start doing something right away. You prepped your mind for success and almost hyped yourself up like I can do this. This is what I want to do. So I'm going to surround myself and listen to things that will inspire me or motivate me to do it. So what was the thing, then you had to take action, yeah, correct? Absolutely. What was yeah. that first action? Because I feel like that first step that you took clearly led you here. Yeah. So what was that action? Well, it's nothing to do with fitness. That's, that's, that's okay. the first thing. It was, uh, <laughs> we, um, so a, a friend, I told your friend's father who had this clothing business, I thought, well, look, he's made loads of money in clothes. So obviously there's loads of money in clothes. And, and um, so I, I spoke to him and I, I sort of said, you know, maybe, maybe you can kind of help me get started. If I buy some of the stuff from you, I'll sell it. Um, and my dad's, you know, thinking about what my dad said about selling in Poland, I thought, well, I'll buy all these kind of ladies dresses and jumpers from him because he used to sell them on, in, on the markets. And I'll, um, and I'll go and sell them in Poland, you know, because I'm sort of putting <laughs> the bits together. Um, and it seemed like a great idea. Um, and I remember, I think, I think we got about like a thousand, a thousand pounds at the time and brought, brought all these boxes of dresses. And I came home to my dad because it was, it was his money. And I said, look, I've got all these dresses. And he was like, okay, I hope you know what you're doing. Different colored jumpers. And then we had these like pink party dresses as well. Yes. 
I don't know anything about fashion, but I'm trusting him that he knows what's going to sell. Um, and, and we had a, I loaded up this Jeep um, and I had a friend of mine as well who was out of work and he said, Look, I'll come with you. Um, and so we, we drove all around there, stopped. I remember stopping at the border in Poland, never, never done this before. And, um, and we, we couldn't get into the country because you're not allowed in. So we had to get a, a, a long lost relative to help get us in. So we slept outside on the border, waited for hours <laughs> oh <my laughs> with these big sort of queues to get in. Um, the guy at customs came out and um, looked in the car. You know, what are you doing? Why are you bringing this in? Are you paying duty? And I'm like, what, what do you mean are we paying duty? You know, have you got documentation? And I'm like, no. Because, you know, normally if you move goods in and out of country, you got to, you know, that you're going to sell, you've got to have documentation mm -hmm. and paperwork and all that. So we, we went into this office, spent hours in there, didn't know what they were talking about because I don't speak Polish. And in the end, he sort of said, give me that box. So I took the box down. He put it under his arm, walked off and said, go. And so we kind of just got into, you know, we got through and, and ended up getting into the country. Um, and so, so then we were in Poland um, and now it was like, right, I'm going to go and sell these. And, and we literally went to, there's a place called Stretching. Um, so if anyone's been to Poland, they know where it is. It's, a, it's like a border, uh, border city. And we just went on, we, we, we went into all these clothing shops that we found and we knocked on the door and we said, do you want to buy do you want to buy some clothes, you know, and, and that was it. And, um, and we, we, it was very slow and painful because we were selling dresses that were from England, you know, which is a very kind of developed market to somewhere in Poland where they didn't have a lot of money at the time. And that, you know, people really couldn't afford that sort of stuff, but it was a good lesson to sort of understand your market before you try and sell a product. But we sold the jumpers and then we had all these pink dresses and, um, was, you know, I, I couldn't go back with it, with all this stuff. My dad would have gone mad and, it had been a wasted uh, journey. So through through some of these people we spoke to, they put us in touch with this guy who had this wholesaler, and it was just before Christmas, and he happened to be looking for all these New Year's dresses for for girls' parties, and he he took the whole lot. So we so that that's kind of how I started, you know. And, I, and I, when I got back, I thought, well, it was it was great fun, it was a great experience, but there's no way this is a you know I couldn't do this every week and, and make money out of it. So that that was I guess that was how I started, and. And we, the reason we're actually called Escape was um, at, we, we had to make these little business cards at the time. And the, and the idea came from, we, uh, and I've skipped a bit, but, you know, we can do it on another interview. But we used to, run, we used to do these parties in nightclubs and, you know, some of them worked, some of them didn't. But one night we sat outside and I said to my friend, what do we call the business? Because uh, we need a name. And he, he said, well, why don't you call it Escape? And um, I was like, well, why escape? And he says, well, we just want to escape from this place. You know, we just want to get out of here. So, so that was the name on the business card. And then when we evolved from fashion into fitness, um, the, the company was registered, the business cards were there. So it's like, look, let's just call it escape, you know, because we've already got this stuff made and, you know, this might not work either. So we'll just, we'll just stick with it. So, you know, that was probably 25 years ago. And that's why we called escape. Nothing really to do with anything. Um, but you know, that's, that's how it all started. <laughs> that is so fascinating. I would have never guessed that that was the beginning of this empire, honestly. But I'm so happy that I asked you that question because, I, again, like I said in the beginning, people just see what you've built and would have never guessed that you were literally trying to break into countries to sell women's dresses. Like, that is how it all started. And I, and I felt like you you were willing to do that to reach a goal that you envisioned yourself in when you were just putting that cassette tape in. So I, I, I guess, is that kind of one of the biggest advice or pieces of advice you would give if someone was just in that phase of like, I don't know how to start and get to that end goal? Yeah. Someone said to me recently um, about, because I ask this question a lot, and even as I'm like, I'm, I'm getting a bit older now, and, um, and I'm still learning, even, even at this age. And one of the things, you know, even at my age, it's like, am I, am I in the right place? Is, is this the right horse to back? And, and, you know, am I going in the right direction? And he, he said to me, he said, look, you know, you never, no one's ever going to come in front of you and say, stop. This is, the, this is what you should do. This is the right road. That, that's just not going to happen. So if you're waiting for that to happen, then, you know, think about something else because it's not, not reality. So what you've got to do is you've got to, um, as what he said, is just pick a horse and get on it. 
and, and just ride it as, as hard as you can. You can always get off it if you realize you, you, it's not the right horse or it's a different direction, but at least you're getting on, you're learning, you're moving forward in a direction. And you know, nobody's saying to you, you can't change. And I, I think for most people, they spend so much time trying to get that perfect idea and, and you know, waiting for the stars to align and waiting for the right business partner or right product. And in reality, it takes you many years for those things to happen. You've, you've got to, I think, gain a certain amount of credibility before some of these great opportunities come to you. But at every stage, you'll get you know small opportunities, and you and, and and it will keep building if you keep moving forward. So I think you, you used the word which was which was action, and at some point you've got to take some action. You've got to do something, and and you know maybe it's totally wrong, but at least you're learning a great lesson. And and even today, you know so many things about those early days of starting the business. I I still use those you know simple lessons in in what I do today. Mm -hmm. I love that. I feel like. Uh people don't realize how many times you fail, or I don't even like using the word fail because I feel like the word failure has a really negative connotation. It's mm -hmm. just lessons of like, okay, this worked. Okay, this didn't work. Um, but you were saying you're on that. I like the analogy of horse. You said you were on the horse of going different ways. So when did that change happen where escape fitness was, you know, the word escape then went to fitness. Like right. when was that pivotal moment, you know, from dresses to fitness? Where yeah. did that change? Well, there's, there's a good link because <laughs> what, what we did when we went out there is we met some um, relatives that we didn't know before and we developed some relationships. Um, so when we came back, it was almost kind of like, kind of, okay, let's regroup. What are we going to do now? You know, mm -hmm. that, was, that was okay, but it didn't quite work. And so um, one, of the, one of the friends that I used to work, at, work out with at the gym I went to, he had his own gym. And we used to we used to go out partying together, um, and and we got talking one evening. I can't remember exactly one point, but there's was, was probably a number of times we'd spoke about it. But he was looking for um, he used to sell equipment on the side, so he had a gym, and then he'd send, sell refurbished treadmills and stuff. And we got talking. And he said, "Look, I'm looking for for some dumbbells, these these kind of chrome dumbbells, because people ask me me for it, and I can't get them from where I used to buy. And I think I must have been telling him about." what my father was interested in doing in Poland. And so we kind of came up with this idea that, <clears throat> that I said to my dad, you know, maybe you can find someone in Poland that can make these dumbbells cheaper than what they can make them anywhere else. Because I think at the time they were making them, manufacturing them in England. And I thought, surely it, the labor and everything's going to be cheaper to make them there. So he contacted the same people. They found some other people within Poland that were manufacturing stuff. And, and from that, we managed to find a few factories that could start manufacturing for us. And so we started with, uh, we started trying to make a rubber Olympic, a rubber Olympic plate and, and a dumbbell. And, um, and so we, although it wasn't a great quality one, it was, it was a good product and it was good enough that we could sell it to somebody. And so that was really where our, where our business started with, um, with a dumbbell and a weight plate. Um, and, um, you know, that when, when, when we found that product, that was a moment I thought, yeah, you know, we've probably got something here. I, I could, I felt I could go and sell these to, to gyms and I, I was excited about doing it. And my father was very good at trying to sort of improve the manufacturing and, and all that side. So that, that was probably where, where the company really started, I think. And then passion kind of clicked in. Do yeah. you feel like passion is a necessity to build an incredible brand like this? Or do you feel like if you just have a hard work drive or, you know, drive, that's enough? Yes, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a great question because it's been something that I've debated a lot with people I've spoke to, other entrepreneurs. And, you know, some people are of the school of thought that, look, you know, it doesn't have to be your passion. You, you, you just need to find a business that you're good at. You can make a lot of money out of it. And then you've got the you've got the ability to do what you want for your passion. So, okay, that's that's one option. Or the other option is that you you just do something you enjoy, but you accept that you might not be able to make the same level of money. Um, for me, my, my personal view on that is that whatever you do, whether you work for somebody or set your own companies, you're going to come up to a number of situations where you're going to probably want to feel like throwing the towel in, you know, whether that's even working out. You know, everybody has those days where it's like, okay, I've, I've had enough of this. <laughs> and, and so the thing that sort of gets you over that stage and, and gets you up in the morning when you've, you know, your business is about to go bankrupt or, you know, your key employees have left you and it's the end of the world. The, the thing that will get you through that, I, th I think for me, 
is that passion for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and so my personal experience, and everybody, everybody's sort of got, got their own journey, but I, I think for me is, you, you, you know, if, if, you, if you're passionate about something, it comes, in, comes out in your products, it gets you through the tough times, uh, and it's also fun to do it. You know, there's nothing like, like I, this is a, an amazing business to be in. You know, I get to do interviews like this. I get to design great products. I get to use great products to work out in. I love working out. Mm -hmm. I love the people I meet. So for me, the lines between business and what I would do if I wasn't getting paid for this are very, you know, very similar. My, my children are involved in the business. My wife's involved. My, I work with my brothers and sisters, although sometimes that can be challenging as well <laughs> but it you know it's it keeps everybody together yeah. and um so so for me I, I would say passion is is important yeah and I think a lot of people might feel like there's only one thing that you can be passionate about and you've done a really good job of you started with one thing and then you just added or changed you know your direction and whatever way that you're going and obviously we ended up here with the escape escape your limit podcast um, what's some advice for people who feel like they started one thing um, and then they feel like they're slowly growing and they're mm -hmm. changing and how to get the voices out of their head or, you know, other judgments of, OK, I think I want to change directions because I think that can be really scary for people if they've dropped a million dollars into one thing and then they're like, OK, I want to add this or change that. What's mm -hmm. some advice for them? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few things in what you've said there, and I'll, I'll try and sort of pick, pick so each one. So many questions for but, you. Well, it's just a few <laughs> different, few important things to, to pick up. But I think the first thing is, um, and we, we spoke about it earlier, is, is you've got to be careful when you have success, a, a little bit of success, suddenly a lot of doors open for you. You know, everyone's like, well, do you want to sell this product? Or, you know, I've got this opportunity. And, and the temptation is if you've not had success before is like, yeah, you know, Let's say yes to one of it, yeah. and and that that can work. The problem is that it, it sort of um, and 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 I'll just add to that. You know, in in where we are in the world today, it's the same thing. You know, people are like trying to pivot and go into different directions, and and you've got to be careful about that because it's it's quite dangerous. Because what got you here? What there's there's a reason where you got to where you were, and that doesn't and and you've you've got to make sure that you understand what got you where you were and not totally go off in a different direction. And we've had, we've done that a number of times. We've got involved in nutrition. We've got involved in, what else have we got? Like clothing. I tell you, there's, mm -hmm. there's a number of business opportunities that we've, we've been involved in and, and a lot of them haven't worked. And, and what, we're, what we try to do now is to understand what our DNA is. Um, and, and so all of us have got certain talents that we're just naturally good at. And those talents we, we, we could sort of be the best in the world if we worked at those talents. You know, no, no matter how talented you are, whether you're an athlete or whatever, that natural talent will, will certainly get you to a position, but it won't get you to the best in the world. The, the best in the world work bloody hard at what they're doing to, to sort of get them there. So I think you've got to have, you know, whether it's friends or family or, or even yourself, you've got to be able to understand what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and as a, as a business and organization, you've got to understand what those are. And then you then align those opportunities with where your strengths are. Um, and and if, you, if you don't do that, you're going to be almost sort of like, you know, fighting outside of your weight and it's going to be quite difficult. So I, I think the first thing is to, is, is yeah, just, just to understand, um, just to try and really get to know yourself and, and get to know, you, know the, the company. The other part, a lot of it's just trial and error. And, and I think um, we use the word sort of failure and however you want to, to describe that. But I think the more you can sort of push yourself and the quicker that you can learn um, by make, making mistakes, I think, I think the better. And, and so, you know, I like to, I think it's easy to be very hard on yourself and criticize yourself. And then also having, having other people when they see you fail, you know, that's quite difficult to, um, to deal with. But yeah, I think you just got to believe in yourself and you got to see failure is, is what's going to get you to where you want to be a lot quicker. And, and it will give you that experience because there's nothing like, being able to go into a new situation saying, look, I've been there, I've dealt with it, like we, we spoke about in the earlier interview. I've been there, I've seen it before, it doesn't phase me. You know, I'm not bothered about it. Mm -hmm. it, it yes, it's difficult, but I can do it. And, and, and you can't do that if you read it from a textbook or if you go and go to a, you know, a guru course. You just can't get it. And so unfortunately, although it's not a nice, um, you know, nice bit of news to realize, is, is you just gotta put in the work, you gotta, you gotta fail, it's going to be tough, but if you really want something, that's 
that's part of, um, of being successful. I mean, and that's kind of why I feel like you have Escape Your Limits podcast. You're bringing on these just incredible individuals and asking how they did it to almost inspire or get information or whatever it may be. What, what is your favorite part about your podcast? Well, the, the reason I started those was, mm -hmm. um, was, was twofold. The first thing is, is that I was very fortunate in, to, in the company that we were able to um, come into contact with so many brilliant people. Um, mm -hmm. that, you know, in fact, one of, the, one of the, the drivers for setting up the business was I wanted to travel. Uh, I'd never, I don't think I've been on the plane and on a flight, been on a, an airplane flight until I was probably mid 20s. We know? had to get you out of there. That was the whole point yeah. of this entire thing. <laughs> so, so I hadn't traveled and I, I wanted to travel, meet people. Um, and so that was, you know, that was, I guess, one of the, one of the sort of like key, key drivers for me. And, um, and I've, I've lost, I've lost track again. I'm, I'm not, I'm not good at, I'm not a good you guest, get, am I? See, no, you're a great <laughs> yeah, guest. Sorry. You're excited. This is the thing. You have so many, so good, good things in your brain. So, so yeah, the podcast. So, so I got, I, I wanted to travel and I got to meet so many great people and I'd sit in these meetings and we'd talk about stuff and I'm like, this is brilliant. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. getting to speak to the CEO of an organization. And I thought if only I could sort of, you know, take what I've learned and, you know, share that with people who work for us, but also share that with other people. And, and then secondly, I just, um, and even today, I, I, want to, I want to learn from other people. You know, I want to learn what it takes to, to sort of, you know, ha how to have the best diet, how to live longer, how to have a great physique, how to have a great business, how to be fantastic at marketing. And, and there's so many people that have done that really, really well. And, and so by sitting down and being able to ask someone whatever you want, mm -hmm. anything, you know, what mm -hmm. it, it, people pay thousands and thousands for consultants to tell them stuff where you know every single week I get to sit in front of some of the best people in their in their industry and I can ask if I've got a problem in my business I can selfishly ask them well how do you solve that you know what did you do I love that um and and you know the good thing about it is it's not just helping me or my organization but you know we're recording this and thousands and thousands of people every single week are, are getting to to cap, to, you know, to benefit from from those questions, and I don't ask, I don't, you know, my style is I don't just ask questions because they're nice questions to ask, or you know, like you know, what what's your favorite supplement, or what I I, I genuinely like to ask questions for for, for things that I've spent um, you know probably months or or years trying to figure out myself, and, yeah. and you know, even in terms of the guests that we get, we don't just you know pick anybody, mm -hmm. we we find people that. Are, are aligned to where we're trying to go and, and the people that work with us are trying to go. And then we, we sort of pick their brains and find out, you know, all their, all their shortcuts. Because a lot of time people don't know how they've got there. You know, a lot of people have had success and it's, and it's quite common really is you, is you just do stuff, but nobody really sort of breaks it down and writes to say, okay, right, you do this on a regular basis. That's something that you need to be aware of. Because mm -hmm. if you had to teach that to somebody else, Mm -hmm. you've, you've, you've got to be consciously aware of, of those little things you do. And because you've done them for so long, you don't actually realize. It's just second nature. It's like, you know, I get up, I work out, I, I eat this, I drink that, I rest. You know, this is how I plan my day. This is what I focus on. All those things are things that you just develop over time, which contribute to making yourself a success. But, but a, a lot of times, if you had to explain it, you just, you don't know how you got there. So for me, I'm trying to say, well, why... Why do you do that? Or what, what were you thinking before you did that? Or what mm -hmm. caused you to, to have those thoughts? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, selfishly for the podcast, we, we just try and pick the best people that have the best answers to kind of move us and other people like us forward. Well, fortunately, it's not selfishly because <laughs> all of us get to listen to it and use, utilize it in our daily lives as well. And so you have been lucky and it, granted, it's not lucky. You've obviously gotten yourself here, but you've been able to actually talk to every single person on your podcast. Do you feel like there's some common um, personality traits with all of your guests? Like, do you, do you kind of pinpoint everyone kind of has one, two, three things that they have in common and to get to their success level. Yeah, I think, um, I think there are definitely some, um, yeah, like you say, su success traits. Mm -hmm. there's, there's definitely that. I've, I've tried to start documenting them and, um, and, 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 and connecting all the dots. Um, if I have to pick a few of them, um, I guess one of the one of the ones that, that you've said is um, you know is, is just uh, 
a great work ethic. Um, I, th I think um, I think that's something that everybody has, and but it, it can be easily misunderstood when you say work. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, there's an interesting book I've been reading at the moment, and I'm, I'm, it looks like I've, I'm going to have him as a guest as well on the podcast. There's, there's a guy um, who wrote the book called The 80-20 Principle. Uh, I don't okay. know if you've read yeah. that, uh, Pareto. I've, I've heard of it. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, and 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 it's very interesting because you you can. You know, you can have people that just work extremely hard, um, but probably not focusing on exactly the right things. And mm -hmm. then you have other people that probably don't quite work as hard, but they understand, you know, the 20 percent of things they can focus on to, to give them the, you know, the sort of 80 percent of the results. And, and so I think, you know, a lot of people, a lot of successful people, they do have a great work ethic, but they're also very, um, very smart because they understand where to put that energy. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's like a like a workout as an example. You know, you can mm -hmm. you can do all kinds of stuff in your workout, as you know, and you can you same for diet. But if, if you get a couple of things right, you know, if there's, there's some really important depending on what your fitness goals are. But there's there's a few key things that you can do. It doesn't have to be that complicated, but you can get the right type of strength training and you can eat the right type of food and you can transform your body. And I, I think that's the same in, in life and business. There's a there's a few key things that you need to focus on. And if you understand those and work hard at them, you can be extremely successful. The, the trick is understanding what those uh, what those key things are. So I think I think the, the work ethic is is a big one. Um, I think the other one that that's I've certainly seen across everybody that I've spoke to is is the the the, the desire to learn. Um, mm. You know, not not just um, not just for the sake of it, but they're just curious people. You know, maybe it's seminars, maybe it's books, maybe it's for other people. But but they're you know they're people that are constantly trying to learn new information and move forward and, and evolve themselves and and uh, you know just just lifelong learners. I think that's that's very important. And so I think if you combine that good work ethic with learning, then you know I don't think you can go that wrong really. <laughs> well, then you have Escape Your Limits podcast. Ah. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about work ethic really quick because I feel like that is a spicy topic right now. Right. Um, trying to find a work-life balance, what that means. I mean, I, I hear people say like, when you're sleeping, I'm working. I only get three hours of sleep a night. I'm up at 3 a.m. You know, it's, it's like this weird convoluted yeah. topic. So what is your work-life balance like? I, well, you should ask my wife know. for a bit about that. <laughs> oh, I will. Later tonight, I'm going to ask her. I'm going to fact check you. <laughs> yeah. Well, two things. One, it's something it, It's something I, I constantly work on. Um, uh, I, I don't know whether I'd have a great balance, but it's certainly a lot better than what it ever was before. Uh, and, and since moving out here, I think I've got a better, get better balance in, in that. Um, and I think combining the, the time I'm with my family and with the business, um, and, and if, you know, if you can, if you're in a relationship or you've got a family where, where those things can work together, I think it's fantastic. You know, we talked about Fit Expo. You know, I go to all the Fit Expos with my children. They love it. Um, so I'm there doing what I need to do. My wife said doing, you know, meeting people and meeting guests for podcasts and doing what she needs to do. And my children are there picking up all the free goodie bags and <laughs> having pictures taken with, with people. So, you know, it's a great, we're all doing our own thing, but we can do it together mm -hmm. uh, as a family. So I think if you can, if you can kind of create a life where, um, you know, all the people around you are, are you know, that are involved, then I think that makes things a little bit easier because if my wife wasn't into fitness and my children, then, you know, it'd be, it'd be quite difficult to, to achieve what I did without that support of, of everybody else. And, you know, I certainly couldn't do what I've done without my wife and, and my family. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that, yeah, I think there's a lot of um, hype on, on, on social media and internet, as you said, you know, like mm -hmm. work hard and mm -hmm. don't sleep and all that stuff. And I think that's totally... Yeah, I don't know whether I can bleep, swear bleep, on here, but bleep, 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 bleep. I, It's your yeah. podcast. Can you swear on here? Uh, do you do I, that? Well, I, I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it, but it's, it's totally, um, it's totally rubbish. And 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 how do I support that claim? Well, if you look in, if you look at anyone that's the, if you look at sports and, and athletes, mm -hmm. if you look at some of the best athletes in the world that are not just had a good sort of you know short career whilst they're young but athletes or or even musicians for, for that respect you know you look at someone that's done it for a long 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 time and and, and extended their career yeah. uh, beyond what's what's typical um, you know think about how they're how they structure their their time and their training they, they're not their attitude isn't 
work hard all the time um, because they would just burn out, you know, mentally, physically, they, they, you know, their bodies just wouldn't be able to cope with it. And, and I think if you look at the most successful athletes that have got some of the best coaches, they realize the importance of recovery, resting. And, and that's really where, like, you know, if you want to build a muscle, you, your muscle builds when you're resting. It's not when you're working out, you're breaking mm -hmm. it down. You need that rest to recover and build back up again. And, mm -hmm. and that's the same with, with work. You know, you can put in all the work that you need, but, mm -hmm. you know, what I've found out from a painful lesson is, is you've also got to have that downtime where mm -hmm. you're able to not, not just instantly react to what's coming in front of you. You've got a, you've got a gap where you can pause, you can think. Um, you can think about what you say to people. You can think about the decisions you make for business. Mm -hmm. You can think, is this the track that I should be on? Because, mm -hmm. you know, going back to your earlier question, um, all these opportunities come and you're sitting in a meeting. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do that. But if you step back and think, you know, where am I going? What am I doing? And you've got that, you've got that rest time and you're not stressed and you're not tired and you're not worn out, then mm -hmm. you'll make better decisions. And, and I think everything in life is about, you know, good, making good decisions. Um, mm -hmm. We... A lot of the people that are in your event, the expo, you know, we've interviewed a lot of them. And, and if, you, if you listen to any of those podcasts, you'll find that a lot of those made the wrong decision um, at, you know, at, at the wrong time. That, you know, anything could have happened if they'd have just stopped back and thought about it. Their life would have been in a completely different direction. You know, who knows where they'd ended up. But, but having taken a step back, thinking clearly and then being able to to sort of go where you want to do, I think it's very, very powerful. And, and, and so I, I think I don't subscribe to the work hard, play hard. I think you've got to work smart. Definitely, you've got to work hard when you're doing it, but you've also got to have that sort of opposite time where you, you know, you're, you're building yourself up, you're, you're thinking. Um, and, and thinking time is something that a lot of people don't realize you need to do as well. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know how many people realize the importance of, actively thinking, um, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about where you want to go, imagining what you want to do, thinking through different scenarios. Um, all of that takes a lot of work. And, and I think a lot of people stop thinking because it's, it's difficult. Um, they, you know, they, they're scrolling through their Instagram feed. It's, it's, it's brainless stuff. We've all done it. But, but your mind's just switched off. You know, it's just allowing stuff to go in it. But it's not it's not proactive. You're thinking about where you want to go and what you want to do in your life. And I would challenge anyone that's listening to this to say, look, if you, you know, I challenge anyone to say, could you spend like 30 minutes for 30 days thinking about your goals mm -hmm. and, you know, give, give it a go if you want, but it's yeah. very difficult. My wife and I tried someone, a, a guy called Mark Victor Hansen told us about it. He did it with his wife. He wrote a book called chicken soup for the soul. A quite very interesting guy. One of the sort of old personal development people. Uh, old, older generation, but he, he said he did it with his wife and we tried it. We got to about 20 days and uh, we, we just couldn't keep it up. It was, it was very, very difficult and we're going to start it again, but we made so much progress in the first 20 days. It was unbelievable. You know, we were changing every part of our life, but, but just sitting, sitting down, thinking, talking about nothing else about where you want to go and what, what do you want for your life? Is something I doubt many people have done, but it's so powerful if you can do that. Well, it's a lot of accountability because you're, and especially if you're doing it with someone else and you're saying these things out loud and they might sound crazy from where you're at, but it can definitely be a scary thing of what that actually looks like and how much work it's going to take. And I think a lot of people question if they're ever working hard enough. Like, do you have like set expectations for yourself of, you know, I feel very accomplished today. Like, am I working hard enough to achieve the goal, finding that, okay, I can take the weekend off or I can, whatever it may be. Do you have some sort of list or is it kind of just how you feel in that moment in that day? I, I do struggle with that. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I'm, I sort of, and I won't sort of share the details. So I don't think it's necessarily something you should uh, take as advice, but yeah, I, I, I do struggle <laughs> to, to shut off. You know, I, I'm, I'll just go until I can't go anymore in a lot mm -hmm. of cases. Um, but I, I think you have got to, it's like everyone, you, most people have got a start time for when they start mm -hmm. their work or their job or anything. But mm -hmm. very few people, unless you're in a job where it's got fixed times, very few people have a, a finish time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's very important to say, right, I'm going to start here and I'm going to finish there. And I'm not, I'm going to close my laptop. I'm not going to do anything else. Um, at the weekends, I think it's, um, it's important to, to, to try and sort of do something different, you know, like, away from from what you're doing to, to be able to get that sort of mental recovery so 
I think so. It depends on on the type of character you are. Some people mm. need to be motivated to do stuff. I'm I'm the opposite. But if you are like me, then it's really important to to know when to stop because it, because it will eventually wear you down. And and all that excitement and motivation you had in your early days, you'll just burn it out, and you and you won't be able to to bring that to your job or your career. Totally. I mean, work work ethic is a huge topic. So I'm glad that you gave us some advice on that. <sighs> Okay, so back to um, escape your limits. First of all, you're probably gonna be fired soon from your daughter. I don't know, she oh, no. did the intro. You had to do two takes, she had to do one take. So, <laughs> I mean, I think moving forward, she might have to be your co-host. Um, and you've had so many incredible guests. I'm gonna give you one of the hardest questions you're gonna have to answer. Don't ask me who's I'm, the favorite one. <laughs> I'm going to, or how about not favorite? <laughs> maybe top three or, or the interview that just really stood out the most that maybe applied to your life and truly helped you move your business to the next level? Who yeah. was that person? It's, 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 it's interesting. I, and a lot of people ask me, you know, who, who's the best guest? And it, one, it's not fair on all the people that I've had to kind For of probably sure. name some. Um, but also, and, and you know, this is a genuine art. So I think when I, when I started my first podcast. I'd never interviewed. You, you're a fantastic interviewer. You're, <laughs> you're, you're a natural. I, I wasn't. I was afraid to be on camera. I, um, I got extremely nervous, and um, and it was very. It was. It really pushed me outside of my comfort zone. It's, I had to. It took me a year to decide to build up the confidence to actually do it. A friend of mine had has a podcast called The Disruptive Entrepreneur um, in England. Very. I think it's one of the most successful business podcasts. And he he invited me on a, as a guest, and he said you should do it. It'd be great for your industry. So it took me it took me a year um, to build up the courage to do it. I practiced on one of my friends, and then I'm like, yeah, let's go. And <laughs> because I'm well connected, you know, a lot of our customers are very important, influential people. It was relatively easy to get some big guests onto the podcast. So I so I did have some very big names on on in the beginning, and um, you know, I was like scared about. <laughs> I just <laughs> petrified. I forget forget the questions. I'd make myself look stupid. Um, so so for me, every single uh, interview I've done has either been a lesson in um, in one how to become better at, <laughs> at, at at doing podcasts, how to ask better questions. Um, but also, I, I think when you when you get an answer to something, you you then get yourself to a different level mentally, and so you then have a, a different level of question to ask as well. And and so I think every every one I've done, they they tend to sort of build upon each other. And then I'll, I'll use some of the earlier ones to kind of to fact check. Um, so it's like, okay, so this guy said he did he did that. This guy or girl said she she this is what she ate or this is how she a morning routine or whatever. So I so I tend to sort of add all those things up and then kind of ask the question in maybe a little bit different or better way or or to give me a bit more specificity. You know, so mm -hmm. if someone says they sleep eight, eight, or eight hours a night or work twelve hours a day. That you know, I'm like, okay, well, that's what I need to do. And then you try it out, and you realize, oh, okay, well, that's not quite working for me. There must be a bit that I've missed. So the next person, I'll say, okay, well, in those eight hours a day, do you actually work? Oh, sorry, twelve hours. Do you actually work all twelve hours, or do you take a break? And mm -hmm. how long do you take a break? And then within those eight hours, you know, how much of that is with your team? How much is that emails? How much is that thinking? Mm -hmm. So you start going deeper and deeper. So, so to answer your question, I think I've I learn from almost everybody that I speak to. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's a great lesson for life because you don't have to speak to high level CEOs to learn mm -hmm. something. You, you can learn something from everybody if you know the right questions to ask and, and in the right way. So I think if you've got this desire to just genuinely be curious about everything in life, whether it's somebody who's you know filling up your car with gas or, mm -hmm. or whatever, there's, there's always some little, little things that you could learn to move yourself forward. So. I know that's a bit of a disappointing answer. It's but. actually not. Uh, well, one, repetition obviously helps with anything that you do. But two, what I got from that was that you just in, like enjoy talking to people. And it's something that it's like you actually care about people. So it becomes easier to want to learn because you're like, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. What What is the steps? How can I apply it to my life? So all of a sudden, you start doing that over and over again, it starts to become more specific. So I think that was a great answer. Also, we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Okay? No, but, but you and I, I'm not saying it not to not to do that either. And to sort of be insincere, you know, it's, it is genuinely true. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, every time I when I first started for the first year, I used to 
be on the phone to my wife at the end because <laughs> she books them and I'm like, that was brilliant. You know, and that was the best one yet. And, and everyone Every time, is the best yeah, one yet. Totally. And you must, you know, you interview a lot it's of people. It's the same thing for me. I don't have someone. That's why I wanted to ask you it because I knew there wasn't going to be an answer. Yeah. Um, you know, just to mess with you. And the yeah. other the other thing is also <laughs> just, just to sort of build on that yeah. is, is that, um, you know, when, when you're... Um, when you know when you interview people, I, I, for me, it's you know the interview is about the, the guest, and um, and and so I'm I'm very much and I'm there to sort of to to kind of take try and sort of translate what's in their mind or help them understand what's in their mind, and and then kind of you know put that message out in a simple way. I, I'm, I'm as myself, I'm sort of fairly simple. You know, I don't try and complicate things I, I try and dumb things down because that's the way my, my brain works I'm quite simple I need to kind of break something that's complicated down into a simple way so I think if I can break it down and understand it myself in a way that I can use it and then share it then hopefully anybody of any level can can do that um, and so I, Larry King I, I, I don't know if you sort of listen much to him but he's I, I guess he's one of the greatest interviewers yeah. of all time <laughs> yeah. And, and he said the same. He said, if, he said any question that's longer than two sentences is, is too long. Um, yeah. And his style is very much that I just want to, he doesn't have any notes, not that I do, because I, I always have notes. But he's, you know, he's a great person to learn from. Yeah. You know, he's been doing it for such a long period of time. And I think there's a lot of truth in what he said about keeping things simple, mm -hmm. but also you know, making the, the guest the star. Because you know, as he said, I'm going to be back here every week. You know, this week it's about them, and you know they're the most important person in the room at the moment. So, how does that feel? Just being the most important person in the room at the moment. It feels fantastic. It does it? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's nice to have it. Nice to have the pressure. We on have all the lights on you. <laughs> we make sure that the collar's looking good. You're doing great over there. I love it. Um, we've talked a lot about business, and I kind of want to end on just some more personal fun stuff okay no, so worried. obviously you're a fitness icon I know that you're blushing when I said that but it's true and you have multiple businesses you have this empire you have a family you're a busy man but uh, you know at the base of it is it's fitness um, how do you find the time or how do you prioritize the time to work out hmm. I, I think one of the most important things that I decided many years ago is that um, is is that fitness comes before pretty much most things in my life. You know, it, it comes before family, um, it comes before business, and and you know you could you could listen to that and say, oh, you know, I, I don't think he's got his priorities right. But um, if you think about it, you know, what's 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 most important for your family, for your business, for your friends is is for you to be. You know, if, if you're a good father, husband, you need to be, you know, mentally in a good place um, and physically, you know, you, you've got two children like mine. You've got to have a ton of energy just to keep them <laughs> occupied. Yeah. So if, if you don't prioritize fitness, your quality of life and, and, and the impact you can have on other people is going to be compromised. You know, just like today, you know, we've, my day, I, I start at, um, you know, start at sort of 5.30, 6 o'clock meetings, interviews, you know, it's, it's a tough, and now, and then my family. And so it takes a lot of energy to, to do all those things in your life. And then to get to Friday when you've had a really, really tough week and then to be a good father, husband. And, and so I think if you don't have that sort of physical strength and, and, and endurance and ability to sort of keep going, then I think everything in your life is, um, is a lot more difficult. And, um, and so, so I, so to answer your question, I think you've got to, you've got to prioritize and, and somehow you've got to make sure you find that, find space in that, even if it means maybe cutting a meeting um, because you need to have a workout. You've got to be kind of fairly selfish on that mm -hmm. because that is what makes the difference to a lot of the people around you. Totally. It's because no one would flake on a meeting if they missed it and would get fired and then they don't have money. They're going to go to that meeting. It's having that importance. Same thing with your workout. So yeah. I and love if you that. Get, you know, like getting... You know, if you, if you get sick, yeah. um, you, you, you're out for a while, and yeah. you know, so, so that's no good. And, and just you know, you, you, it's surprising the the value of energy. Um, and if you you kind of come in on a Monday and you you know you're tired from the weekend and you've not been working out, you've not been eating well, you've been mm -hmm. drinking too much, you know, you use that Monday's totally wiped out. So mm -hmm. you're only doing a four day week, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you, you times that over you know several months and several years mm -hmm. is, is you you know. You're not going to get on as well as anybody else as well if you're not you know, fit and strong.
Totally. I love it. <laughs> Completely agree. All right, we're going to wrap up. I love doing this with everyone that I interview. It's the best. <laughs> Rapid fire, okay? okay? Ten questions. Okay. First thing that comes to your mind, just blurt it out, okay? Don't overthink it. And some of them Spicy are going to be fun. margarita, what, which is what we're going to do for your birthday. Absolutely. <laughs> you did it. Let's, that's it. Cut it. We're wrapping it. Okay. Okay. Ten questions. Here we go. We're going to just rapid fire. What is one food you could never give up? Ooh. Um, a real fresh piece of tuna. <laughs> what? I did not expect you to say that. Are you going to oh, say like a, a fresh piece of bread or tuna, something? Yeah. Tuna. Okay. Nice, like super fresh, lightly cooked, like my wife does it. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that's that's one of the best. Meals. That was a, a shocking answer. A bit of spinach. That's, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd struggle if that wasn't in my life anymore. Okay, I love it. Okay. If you had access to a time machine, where and when would you go? Oh. Is it to the pink dress? Man, yeah, <laughs> gee, I, um, this is rapid, rapid. Yeah, I, I would, I would like to go forward, and I'd like to see the life my children are going to have when I'm my age. I think that would be amazing. Oh yeah. My God. yeah, can I cry on your podcast? Is that allowed? <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> let me gather my thoughts. Are you a morning or night person? Night. Ooh, that was quick. Yeah. What is your biggest pet peeve ever? My biggest pet peeve, um, traffic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now LA that you moved here, I was like, more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that. Um, what is something you are really bad at? Um, <laughs> what am I something I'm really bad at? Just keep, well, my wife would tell me keeping the house tidy. That's one thing. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I just just spending too much time concentrating on one thing. I I, I just struggle. I, I kind of you know I'm a short attention span and I'm okay onto something else. Quick, you know. quick, 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 quick. Okay. Um, when are you the most inspired? When I just when I'm around, I guess inspiring people. I I, I try and inspire myself, but I think um, you know meeting somebody that's that's focused on and achieved something out of their life and worked hard. I, you know, I, in, in any field, you know, I just watching someone dance or play the drums or sing, you know, that, that inspires me a lot. Yeah. I just think I wish I could, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I wish I was you. you. Know, I okay. wish I was a rock star or something. <laughs> Absolutely. <like that. laughs> Um, okay, remember this is this is your podcast. You have to be very honest yeah, and open be with us, okay? What I say as well. <laughs> Wait, no, listen to this question. I need to know what is one of your weirdest quirks? And I mean, I want you to tell me something that you don't want to tell people. Because they're gonna hear it here first. My weirdest quirks, gee. Something just so weird that you just never wanted to share, but now I'm forcing you. Okay. Okay. Um... <laughs> Wow, now I'm now I've got a sort of dig dig the weirdest quirk. And, and when, when you say quirk, it's like it's just a, something weird. Like example for me, I hate drinking out of hard plastic cups. Okay. For some reason, it makes me just I can't do it. Yeah. Hard plastic, but regular plastic like those disposable cups, fine. Hard right. plastic, I can't. So that people think I'm really weird because of that. Okay. So something like you know. Just weird. Okay. Like you twirl your I've probably hands. got lots of weird things, but as you're talking about drinking, I, I'm 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 really particular about like I, I certain glasses for certain types of drink. So if it you know if it's champagne or if it's wine or if it's tea or if it's coffee, I kind of I can't drink it in a different type of cup. So if someone kind of brings it to me and it's in the wrong cup, I just I kind of put it push it aside. It's you just can't a different even experience. Drink it. No, not not really. Like if it's. Um, yeah, I, I I struggle with those. So. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. Um, what superhero power would you have? What superhero power? I I I think it's it, it it's a superpower, but it's also a bit of an Achilles heel. I'm very creative. I love going for a run, coming up with lots of ideas, and then going back to my team and giving them and and just throwing them all into total confusion <laughs> about what we could do. So I'm a I'm a big ideas person, but also you know I have to kind of learn that. You know, you you got to balance those ideas with keep getting people to sort of keep up with what you're thinking. So, so no, what superhero power would you want to have? Oh, would like, I want to have? Yeah, like would okay. you want to be invisible to run naked through the streets? Well, that that'd is be that, interesting. Is that what you yeah. want to do? Well, yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd <laughs> yeah. always, 
I, I think I, I love music. Okay. And and I, I don't know whether it's, it's kind of like a superpower, but I, I would love to either be able to sort of play a guitar or the drums or sing to a really high level. Yeah. You know, just just that experience of uh, being able to do like you know all the guitar things. That that would be. Don't you agree? Yeah. Like standing in, on stage, you, being a rock star. <laughs> you would catch bad guys by your incredible music. That's exactly how it is. Yeah, they would it, just have to stop and just listen to yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's that's how I do it. It's probably perfect. not answered your question very no, well. No, it's perfect. I, I love I, it. That, that's that's the one that rapid comes fire. To mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this might be a story, so you don't have to rapid fire this one, but you have to answer it. Okay. What is the stupidest thing you've ever done because someone dared you to do it? <laughs> What's the stupidest thing I've ever done because someone dared me to do it? Um. Well, I, I just do stupid things anyway. I don't need it. When I was a kid, like now I'm older, I just tell people that I'm not going to do I'll only do what I want. But I think when I was a kid, I just mm -hmm. used to do stupid stuff and get in trouble all the time for doing stupid things. You know, no one would have to tell me to go and jump over the wall and throw, kick a ball at a window. So I, I just used to do crazy things. So I, I don't need encouraging, <laughs> okay. I think. We need to discourage you yeah, from doing stupid things. Yeah, you need things. to sort of, Matthew, calm down Can a you calm bit. yourself? Yeah. yeah, okay, great. <laughs> All right, final question, and this is a good one. Um, okay. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Wow, if I had the world's attention, 30 seconds. I, I think it would be, um, you know, outside of world peace and everyone should get on and all that kind of stuff. I think for me, it's what we're doing as, as a business. I, I think so many people um, need to understand the benefits and the power of a, of a healthy, um, a healthy lifestyle and um and i think you know we're we're all in this sort of fitness space and we're probably a real small percentage of people that that understand that but i, I just think that you know grandparents and parents and, and people just being able to try and convince them in a way where they're going to do something about it you know because mm -hmm. you could say stuff but most people it's just going to go straight through them but if, if i could have the right words to say it in a way where it was going to motivate some people to get up and do something about it mm -hmm. and realize the power of, of fitness and exercise, um, you know, on the mind, on the, on the body, on relationships. I think that would create, you know, solve a lot of problems in the world. So, you know, that's probably what I would say. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for having me flip the script, interview you. Your fans love you. You're amazing. Your brand is insane. Your family is the best. I love your kids so much. Um, and as a closeout, what would you like to say to your fans? Just um, thank you for, yeah, thanks for supporting me when I was probably not great and, and <laughs> sticking with me. And, um, and uh, yeah, just kind of, I, I guess, you know, inspiring me to continue to do this. Because I guess a lot of times I'm, I'm like, well, is is this really worth doing you know because you don't when when you're doing this through podcasts and stuff you don't really get to see or hear anyone um unless they they happen to write to you which is fantastic when that happens but a, a lot of times like you know is this really impacting anyone are my questions making a difference to people's lives um is it worth all the hassle that it goes to put into these because as you know you know there, there's a lot of preparation that goes mm -hmm. into it and that's just the interview itself and then you know there's people like kevin that do all the filming and the editing. There's people like my wife that spends, you know, months and years trying to get guests. There's there's a lot that goes into it. So so I guess you know thanks for following us and uh, and I guess giving us a reason to continue and hopefully you know having a positive impact on many people still. You definitely are. And thank you again. This was so much fun. <laughs> thank you. Fantastic <laughs> questions. I've, I've learned a lot. <laughs> Hey, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, then please go over to iTunes and subscribe to the Escape Your Limits podcast. Leave a review, leave a comment. It really would help us a lot to continue to keep these going.